So you're looking to use OBS for all of your recording needs and you're not really sure what settings you should be using for your rate control, bit rate, etc. Well, I've got you today. Not only am I going to show you video comparison from lossless to the other options, I'm also going to talk to you about my recommendations as well as a few things that you can do to better that experience for you as well as your viewers. Let's get into it. Before we get into the video, guys, I just want to say thank you for stopping by. I'm Cyrus, and I'm here to help you improve your streaming experience, not only for you, but also for your viewers. If you like this video, make sure you hit it with a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and ring that bell for notifications. Also, if you want to come and chat with me, I do stream on Twitch three days a week, and would love for you to come be a part of that stream as well as join the Darkness Discord. We have a fantastic community of people who are there to help and support you, as well as have a ticket system that we can be able to answer any of the questions that you might have. And with that out of the way, let's talk about OBS recording and make those comparisons so you can choose the right settings that work for you. All right, so this video actually came from a comment on one of my previous videos. I'll put it up right here so you can see it. The person was asking, can you actually review and talk about what we're gonna talk about today? So I hope this is helpful, especially for that person but for the rest of you I hope this is helpful for you to help improve your content with that let's go ahead and go into the computer I want to show you an article before we actually get into video evidence that is kind of a written and spelled out version of what I'm going to talk about today that really explains this well and I, I hope this is also helpful so let's jump over to that all right we're over on mob crush's website if you don't know what mob crush is it's actually a restreaming service that can be free depending on if you're using Streamlabs OBS or not or if you're using that integration whatever the case but anyway uh andrew whitehead who's the person who wrote this article went ahead and put this up and talked about what each rate control is and how actually it impacts your stream like what cbr abr cqp vbr crf lossless and etc and he talks about where they actually sit where you can find them some of them are only on amd cards or nvidia cards whereas some of them are only x264 or encoding with your cpu so we're actually going to walk through what that looks like and see how that impacts not only the, the file size the bit rate that's needed to get really good quality but also what that video looks like so let's jump over into obs i'm going to show you these settings before i actually show you the videos so you understand where we're going with this all right so we're over in obs and i want to show you a few things that's going to help you out not only for just recording gameplay and having your camera wide but also just talking about those different options. First, we're gonna go into settings and we're gonna go straight to the video tab. Right here, you're going to see where you can choose your base canvas as well as your output. These are very important to know what your video is going to be on the exporting end when it's done and you finished recording. These two things need to be set up correctly. Your base canvas needs to be your monitor. Right now, I have mine set to ultra wide, actually double 1080p because what I do is actually set this to 3840 by 1080 and I put my webcam on one side as well as the gameplay on the right so I have full resolution and then crop them down. If you wanna know more about that, I covered it in my 20 tips video for OBS. I'll link it right up here. But what you wanna do is, for example, my base canvas is 1080p because that's what the monitor I use and the output is actually what this video is going to be. So if it's set to 1080p as in by 1080, then that's what you're going to get. If you make it 720, then you're going to get a 720p video on the output end. Downscale filter, I would leave it at Lanxos. If you start seeing that you're having some encoding errors or if it just kind of looks a little weird or very sharp, you might want to back this down to buy cubic. Also, FPS values. I run 60 just because I like to see that nice fluid motion. But if you're doing slow motion content that doesn't have a lot of movement, 30 is fine. Or if you're only recording things that are in 30 frames anyway, just put it back down to 30. I like running 60 frames just because that's my preference. All right, let's go over into the output tab and then let's make sure that our output mode is selected on advanced if it's on simple everything looks very clean however we don't get a lot of options on changing settings so make sure you're on output mode advanced click over to the recording tab and this is where we're going to be leaving kind of or camping a little bit today is talking about the settings in here so we want to make sure that the type is set to standard your recording path is where your videos are going to be dumped and they are done recording so you need to put this somewhere where you know where you can find them recording 
format. Out of all of these here, some of these are great options. Some of you might wanna go straight to MP4. I wouldn't recommend it. I would go to MKV because what'll happen is it's actually recording the video as you're doing it and writing the file. So let's say you lose power in the middle of a recording or whatever the case, you're not gonna lose the recording up to that point. It's not a final cut video like MP4 is. You can turn MKV into MP4 within OBS and I'll show you how to do that very easily. To convert MKVs into MP4s, choose File at the top and Remux Recordings. Select the MKV recording, choose Open and then Remux and it will dump it out as an MP4 file for you to use. Audio track. I have four, five, and six selected. I like to have my microphone, game, as well as my party chat separated. So if I do use it in post in some way, that's how I'm able to split those out and have individual audio control. I'll quickly show you that. I'm gonna go ahead and click off and to cancel. On your audio mixer, if you right click and go to advanced audio properties, you're going to see on the tracks on the right side here, I've got four, five, and six selected. Four is my mic, five is my game, and six is party chat chat and all I've done is set those up I actually don't bother with these when I stream everything that's in channel one is selected so I just leave everything on there but when I record I don't have to change anything they're preset here all right and then let's go back into settings and let's talk about more of the output the next things are the encoder this is kind of where you're having your decision of which rate control you're going to use the stream encoder is basically what it says whatever you're using on your streaming side you don't necessarily want to record at the same bit rate you stream at because like for Twitch example, the max you can do is 6,000. You can get away with 8,000, but you can do 6,000. Uh, however, for recording, you can always record at a higher resolution and get a much better visual for your viewers, especially if it's on a platform like YouTube. Uh, so you can choose whatever options are here. Mine is NVIDIA NVENC. I have a 2060 Super and a Ryzen 5 3600 in my build. So right now I'm using the NVENC for my encoder because it has a lot more horsepower on the encoder compared to my six core 12 thread. CPU, which is what X264 is. So again, the difference is NVIDIA has a dedicated encoder that is separate from the actual graphics chip that's powering what's happening on the game. So it's, it's made specifically for streaming and gameplay separate. Most cards have them, if they're especially if they're in the last few years, have an encoder built on them, AMD as well as NVIDIA. So you can definitely use their hardware encoding. So looking at NVIDIA and Vink, we can go down, we're gonna go past rescale, make sure you don't do that here, and custom muxer settings. If you wanna know more about this, let me know. I can add some in the comments if you want. Rate control, this is really where we're talking about today. What one do we choose to get the best quality video for what we're wanting to use? For NVENC, again, we have CBR, which is constant bit rate, CQP, which is constant quantization parameter, pretty sure that's what it is, uh, VBR is variable bit rate, and then lossless is kind of really high quality. The video we're using today is actually lossless, and when I choose that, you'll see that these are the settings that I was using earlier. Zero on the keyframe, quality for the preset, I had look ahead on with profile high and max reframe of four. And the reason I use these settings, I was gonna do max quality, but I was overloading in the encoder, so I backed it off to quality. And you're gonna see that clip that you can compare that to the others in just a moment again. I'm gonna take that lossless video, put it against the other rate controls that are here. For example, VBR and CRF. If we go over to X264, you'll see the differences here. Over on X264, we have some similar options. CBR and VBR have carried over, but you have ABR, which is adaptive bit rate. It just means that it takes the bit rate it has and kind of fluctuates up and down what it needs. And then CRF is used kind of similar to CQP and the fact that it actually takes each frame and figures out how much bit rate it needs and is constantly changing that. But it's on the CPU chip rather on the encoder chip on your GPU. So here's how we're gonna do this today. I'm actually gonna show you two or three different comparisons so that you can understand the separation of what each type of file size, what it does, how it works. So we're first going to do it to the test of lossless compared to CQP, which is where the bit rate is determined 
based upon each frame as well as lossless to CRF. Essentially the same thing just on X264 instead of NVENC or AMF. Both of those kind of do the exact same thing so I'm going to show you lossless to that. Then I'm going to take you from lossless to VBR which is a variable bit rate and that's going to be where you set a target as well as a maximum and an ABR which is adaptive. That's where you set an adaptive or kind of a baseline and it fluctuates from there. And then I'm also going to show you what it looks like when you show gameplay that's clean from lossless to what it looks like on your stream running 6000 bit rate at high quality what you would normally see on your gameplay and show you the difference in quality from a lossless recording to what you would be downloading from a VOD. Let's go ahead and roll those clips. I'm going to kind of split them half and half and uh, I'll put all the relevant information for bit rates and stuff in the corner. So here we go. Let's roll it. I hope those comparisons were helpful seeing the difference between lossless to all of those different types of recordings using that original file to export onto those. I hope you can clearly see a difference on how I was able to mosaic them like trying to put lossless in the center of, of both of the two options and I hope that really showed you how much degradation of quality happened. Now what are my recommendations? If you have an NVIDIA card with a Turing NVENC or an AMD card with one of the most recent encoders, I'm not really familiar with their encoders, but if you have something like that, I would definitely recommend you using the CQP option. I think that it has the most quality that's close to lossless. However, you're not, you're not really losing that much. Behind CQP, I would definitely recommend you using variable bitrate. And the reason for that is, again, you're losing a little bit of quality, but that file size is so much smaller. And I'm actually going to pop those up on the screen right now. You can actually see the file names that are over on the left side and how large those files are on the right side. I think it's a 45 second clip for each of them. And you can see the difference between how large that lossless file was and how much smaller the rest of them are. So if you don't have a lot of storage, you might want to really think about, well, maybe lossless isn't the best thing to do all the time, especially if I want to hang on to gameplay. I'm getting, I believe, something three or four gigs from 40 seconds of video, and I do a two hour recording, you can only imagine how quickly you're going to fill up a hard drive. So really think about what options you want when you start to choose recording. And I think that'll wrap up this comparison and, and really bring this to a, to an end. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit it with a like, subscribe to the channel, and ring that bell for notifications so you don't miss content like this.
Also, check me out on my Twitch. I stream three days a week. I'd love for you to stop by and be a part of that and just jump in chat. Come jump in a game with me. It'd be awesome. Also, jump in the Darkness Discord. The link for that is in the description below. Come be a part of our community. We'd love to have you. Come ask questions. Just chill with us. Uh, we, we do a bunch of stuff there. And I think that's it. Guys, I'm Cyrus, and welcome to the darkness. We'll catch you next time.